Howdy, folks. <laughs> hey, it's Gowan. Little John. Ah. I'm putting together um, the base for the hard seltzer. Uh, yeah, so I want to go through this process. I'm going to play around with a few different uh, methods of flavouring. Hard seltzer, underway. Um, I'm doing, it's going to be 20 litre batch. I've got 20 litres of the Tasmanian mountain water, natural spring water. Uh, from my research on this, they're saying you want the cleanest water you can get. Uh, I could have got full reverse osmosis um, with the pure AU, but uh, this Tasmanian spring water is actually it's a couple of couple of bucks cheaper the mountain water's clean it's 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 good water it's, it's nice water um that's the main thing you just don't want water that's got chemicals in it which could create flavors um because we're looking for something that is very lightly flavored and it's very clean so any chlorine or anything like that any of those extra flavors that might come with your tap water are potentially going to show through very much in the end product so good clean water seems to be a pretty important starting point um, and the other thing is this is uh, effectively an incredibly cheap fucking thing to put together so spending a few ex few dollars on the water is not a big issue okay so i've got a couple of litres of water here, not measured out, just a few litres in the, in the, in the pot. Um, and that's just going to be so I can dissolve my dextrose. Um, I'm going to boil it for a little bit and then top it up. So uh, I'm just about to sit down um, and work out exactly what amount of dextrose I want um, to get my desired gravity so I can know where I'm starting at. Um, and then I'll come back and we'll start putting this together. <laughs> okay, so I've just punched the numbers into brew fiber. And it's telling me if I use 1.4 kilos of dextrose, then that should get me to about 4.2% ABV. Uh, it's telling me I uh, have a starting gravity of about 10.26 uh, and final gravity should be about 0.994 um, of course you're going to end up fairly dry. Um, so I'm happy with that. So our water's the water is warming up so I've got the sugar in here Decks and just start getting it dissolved. That's one kilo. Scale here, and I'll do the re dodgy reverse weigh system to get 400. And as we know, this invariably goes wrong on for me. Get that in. Oh, no. And what I want to do now is just bring that to a boil and let it boil for 10 minutes just to make sure there's nothing on that dextrose, nothing in there that might bloody take over. So that's it. let that boil for 10 minutes. And I'll come back. 
And we'll uh, get this into a fermenter. Okay. We boil for 10 minutes. It's going to throw in a teaspoon of nutrient into that boiled water. Yeah. Nutrients fairly important in this because there's nothing in here for the yeast to feed on. So we want nutrient in there to make sure we get a nice clean healthy ferment. Uh, and that's just um well that nutrient I'm using that's from um that's Kegland nutrients, I don't know exactly what it is entirely. Um but just some nutrient of some kind. Uh make the one teaspoon. Hoping will be enough. Uh, I've got my water in here. Now I'm going to just this splash around. Um, she flashed a bit on the way in, and I don't know how much oxygen this is going to have in it up front. And I don't know how much I'm actually going to need. But we'll get some in there. A little bit extra anyway. Well, I was trying not to get this flashing out over my bloody laptop. <laughs> it just had a little bit of fucking drama. The moment, two seconds after I say not splash it on the fucking laptop, laptop fucking shut down. I went into sleep mode and the screen blanked out. So, yeah, thanks for that. That's fucking great, isn't it? Computer's having a fucking laugh at me. Right, uh, that's in. Yeah. This water was nice and crystal clear before I put nutrient in. That's all good. Um, now, as you can see, I'm going into the all rounder. Now, these things don't take water above about 55 degrees, apparently, without bloody turning into a science experiment. So, I've added what was left of the water, which has got me at 17 litres, which, it's, which was roughly what I was expecting to get, because I estimated they had 3 litres in here. Uh, so, um, this is going to stop any uh, warp you can carry on from the Firmzilla, and should get me, well it's going to get me the temperature range, I'm, I'm happy to pitch yeast that. So, it's going to pour this in. She's in. Give it another mix. Temperature. Thermometer around here saying, well, she's about 29 degrees, um, which I'm happy with. Yeast for this fella. Now it's telling me I've got. Uh, she's flipping around, it's hard to say. It's going to be somewhere around 21 litres for looks of it. So that's all good. Yeah, it's going to set it around 21. So I'm going for EC 118 as the yeast. Uh, just a champagne wine yeast. Um, so this stuff record cleans well, ferments nice and clean so I'm hoping this will give me a good clean neutral ferment with no flavours from the yeast uh, and just leave me nice clean alcoholic water uh, which I can then add my flavourings to uh, and that will be on the uh, next video but um, I'm just going to grab out the um, reef rack and get a reading on this The old sanitizer. And the 
And that's telling me eh, 1026, 10, uh, which I think was exactly what I was looking for. AG 1026. So we pretty much bang on 20. Well, I've got 21 litres and I've got bloody 1026. So I've got a little higher than calculated. That's all good. That will work fine. So I'm going to throw the lid on this. We'll get our yeah, because everything's sanitised. So this will go into the ferment fridge at 18 degrees. Now I'm not too worried about this being sealed because I don't want to build pressure in this because I want to I just want this to be neutral um, so I will put a spanning valve on and just crank it open uh, I'm not going to take the I could take the cap off and stick a bloody airlock in it but I'm not that's going to be easier to just put a spanning valve on it and let it run so this will probably run, I'll probably leave this for two weeks. <laughs> right, <laughs> hey folks, um, just a quick one. Now, there's no actual video of this, so I've just done it and I forgot. Uh, I've just taken a hydro sample. Um, on this seltzer. It's five days in. Uh, it's the 19th today, I went down on the 14th. Uh, so the gravity is sitting about 1012. Um, it's, it's quite cloudy. Um, I'll snap a picture up. I'll put a picture up. Um, but it's tasting, it's tasting pretty good. It's reasonably clean. Um, when I'm tasting, I'm not getting any unusual sort of flavours, there's no yeasty flavours or um, any astringency or anything like that um, so that's a good thing, I'm, look, I'm, I'm very very thankful for that so I'm look, hopefully she's travelling along nicely um, obviously she's still got a ways to go in the way of gravity um, still got a good you know probably 12, 14 points to go um, so it's probably only really halfway through the ferment uh, it's just starting I've kept the pressure down the pressure sitting on about bloody 1 psi uh, I can't get my spunding valve really any lower and still have it releasing um, so it's not pressurising at all um, which is interesting because that means it's still not throwing any flavours even without the pressure uh, I'm just tossing up at the moment whether I don't think I'm going to I think I'm going to crank up We'll close the, the valve down and let the pressure build up um, so I can start getting some pressure so I can actually bottle directly onto the flavours. Um, because I really I don't want to put priming sugar into the bottles um, and have any changing of flavour, but the problem is. If I use any flavourings that have got sugar in them, then that's going to that's going to affect obviously the end carbonation. If I've already got carbonation in it when it goes in the bottles, so um, it's a bit of a <laughs> it's a bit of a dilemma. So I've got some I do have some flavourings which are going to be no sugar, uh, so obviously they're going to go straight in with carbonation. With um, if it's primed and gassed up through the ferment without any problem, but if it is gassed up and I'm sticking in more sugar 
then but but same token the sugars that I'm going to be adding it's not going to be massive amounts so uh, yeah it's interesting what I actually what I might do um, is I might just collect, let it come up to about maybe 10 or 12 psi and no more than that uh, and I can I can go with that because I think that will be enough that anything that's got sugar added to it it will bring it up to a nice carbonation level um, and I think I can probably take off from the fermenter initially take off the stuff that's going to be mixed with sugars and then there's whatever's left is going to go into bottles without any extra sugar being added I think I can just put some pressure into the I can just pump pressure into the um, all rounder um, and do it that way yeah stick another crank up to 20-22 psi and then, and then cold crush and put, force that bloody CO2 into it and bottles from there um, and get it that way but anyway we'll see how that pans out but um, yes yeah, so I just want to catch up I said I just had it I had it, I had it sitting here I was, doing other stuff. I'm actually doing the uh, the video for the honey on the bourbon, which you can you can see the jar still sitting here. Um, and drink drinking one of Kev's bloody ciders. Um, and I wasn't until I popped the picture up on Facebook and then someone says comment what's gonna be on the channel and I went, ah oh, shit. So <laughs> apologies for not having visuals but just imagine it was <laughs> yeah, just pretend it's in there. Because it's really all it was just bloody <laughs> in there um, but anyway I'll see you in a little <laughs> see you soon um, hopefully progressing just to catch up on uh, how this seltz is traveling along I've just taken the sample off we are now 13 days since I put this on doesn't seem like 13 days, but it certainly is. That's what the bloody dates are telling me. And I'm pretty sure the dates are all correct. So, that's how she's looking. Um, it's hard to tell them there, but that's going to sharpen that tube. It's not the best, but it's looking fairly clear. Uh, which is good. So, let's get a bloody... I want to get a gravity reading on this one. I took a reading the other day and I bloody haven't written it down. I forgot what it was at. But it was about, I think it was about 1004, somewhere around there, because um, I did start the cold crash. Um, well, I put in the 9.8, so uh, it was, we're going to do some work. So we are looking at, she comes around, okay, that's sitting bang on 1000. Uh, so. Yeah, on the dot. So pretty happy with that. Um, I don't want to. I didn't. Don't want to be too really too dry. So um, I did have the potential to go to like 0.994, something like that, with just being pure dex. Um, I really didn't want that. So I'm happy that's where it's at. Uh, it may not stay there. It may. It can, it may go a little bit further once it's um, bottled up, but that's not going to worry me too much. Um, so I've just dropped the temp on it to 3.8 degrees. Just the cold, so I get the cold crash fully done. Uh, I wound the pressure up on the spunding valve a couple of days back, uh, and it built up to about 16 psi. Um, I've crashed that now, so at the moment it's still sitting at about 15, a fraction over 15 psi in the um, all rounder, uh, but that will certainly soak, you know, get soaked up and taken up into the um, into the liquid over the next sort of two or three days, and I really actually cold crash this properly. I said down to 3.8 at the moment, that's what it's set to. Tomorrow I'll drop it down to um, about 0.8, down around one degree. Um, and really get that CO2 in there and get it ready so I can start packaging it up um, so I'll be looking to package this next weekend uh, today's 
Tuesday. Um, now there's no real there's no real smell on it. And the taste is fairly clean, um, which is good. Things are fully um, fully cold crashed. Uh, brews on point, you know, 0 0.8 degrees in the fridge. Um, I'll pop up a picture, and you can see there it's dropped out, yeah, super clear. Um, you can see the picture there. You can see the tube. The, the pickup tube in the um, all-rounder um, quite clear in the middle uh, so yeah it's really really cleared up it was still a little bit um, tiny little bit hazy um, a few days ago when I did that other video so um, I'm really happy where, with where that is um, right now it's Friday uh, I've got to work tonight so I haven't got as much time as I'd like today um, but what, what I am doing today is I'm getting the first lot transferred um, and I had talked on this on the, the video the other day about um, the mixers so I talked originally and I wasn't wasn't fully locked in on what I was doing um, but I've got some some syrups you know some cordial type flavorings soda stream flavorings um, that I'm going to use so I've got three different flavorings there I'm going to use them I'm going to do a separate video on those uh, when I'm bottling those um, but what I did discuss the other day was I did want to put some some of this onto actual fruit um, and I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to go about doing that because I've carbonated what's in the what's in the all-rounder um, and I really wasn't sure how I was going to get that the carbonated stuff into a different fermenter to basically do a secondary ferment or just go to secondary on the fruit to um, you know to get that flavor out and things with the, with the gas already in it uh, so what I come up with uh, was that I just go to a nine litre keg so I've got 20 litres here I'm going to split this over four different methods um, and some of the other flavors got there are only going to do um, a free to free to like 3.3 .3 litres or something in, on two of the bottles. Um, so I've got 20, 20 litres there, can probably get yes, 18 litres out of the um, out of the fermenter with too much trouble. So I'm, I'm going to take you know, something like 9, 10 litres off the other with the cordial. So it still leaves me you know, 8 litres somewhere around there. Um, no problem. So I can get on a nine litre keg. I can keep it under pressure. I can keep the gas um, and put the fruit in there. Uh, and I started thinking, hang on, but then that's going to. I'm going to have a bunch of fruit in the bottom of the bottom of the fermenter, oh, bottom of the keg, which will become a fermenter. Um, I'm starting to ferment these things quite regularly now. Um, not the nine. I've used a nine litre before, but after I'd, I'd done the video and <laughs> had. I got, as I got off the video, I started thinking, you, you know, bloody, well, when I was doing the video, I was in the process of not going through my head that I wasn't going to be able to get the, um, well, that salsa out because of the fruit, because the dip tube's only down the fruit. Um, but, well, just cut the bloody dip tube. Um, same as I've done with the 19 litres to get, you know, to make them into fermenters. Um, so I've chopped that much off the bottom of the dip tube. So the dip tube normally sits around here somewhere. Uh, right down in the and actually it's, it's bent. Uh, you can see there, it's not it's not straight like a normal 19 litre, it just goes straight down. It has got a bend on it, and it which this goes into the middle of the keg. Um, so effectively it's going to stop off in this little mark here. So I'm, I'm, I'm losing about a third of the keg on the bottom. Uh, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that because um, most of that's going to be fruit, and this is what's going to what we're getting to. So I'm looking. I can probably get. If I put nine liters in here, 
I can probably get five litres out. Um, maybe six. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and that will leave me other stuff, plenty to do the others. And as I said initially, this is only really experimenting, playing around with different different methods here um, to work out what works. Um, so if I do want to do bigger batches going forward, I know what flavourings and things I can use going forward. So, as I said, I've cut this dip tube down this keg. I've now been sanit re-sanitised. It had been sanitised. It's been re-sanitised after I've cut down the dip tube. Still in there. And I'm going to put some fruit in here. Uh, and I've got a, a bit of a different option. Uh, I was flipping around the uh, supermarket with my woolies and going through the freezer, all the frozen stuff. And I come across these two options. Uh, and I thought, okay, it's something a little bit different. You know, people have suggested raspberry and all that sort of stuff. But what I've gone with is some frozen coconut chunks. Uh, yeah. They're just they they they're just little chunks. So in they go. And This one, pink dragon fruit. Now, I've never actually eaten dragon fruit. Never have. Um, so I don't even know what a bloody taste like, what the flavour is. I do know people who like them, like them. But, but hey, let's go for it. Something different. Nice and pink. I think it might add some nice colouring and whatnot. But uh, <laughs> it is quite pink. So okay. It's a bit watermelony. It's strawberry-ish, yeah, it's bloody... I think there's a real lot of, I think there's a real lot of flavour there. But, anyway, that's what we're going with. So that's in there. Uh, okay, and that's sitting well below that, where I cut that uh, pickup. I probably could have left another, maybe another two centimetres on there, looking at that, without too much issue. But, That's all good, that stuff swells up or anything, it's gonna, it'll clear that. And I'm bottling the seltzer. Now, you saw on the last video, um, transferring them out onto the keg, onto the, which went onto fruit. Uh, and that's left me about half the batch, which I'm gonna put onto well, into, into, into bottles. Now, I'm flavouring this three different ways. Uh, and basically what I'm doing is, simply because this is what I could access in town, um, is I've got three different, basically soda stream flavours. One as a Schweppes lemonade, solo lemon, and this is a, a water flavour, um, just, just actual soda stream one, uh, orange mango. Now these are all sugar free, which means I can go straight to the bottle as it is. I'm not going to get any further fermentation in the bottle, so I can bottle straight from the all rounder and add some flavouring, and these are going to be good to drink. Uh, so, I'm just working out what I can, the ratios I need to work with with these. Uh, and I'm going to start with the, um, 
with these fellas. Now, it's a 300ml bottle, it's basically the same bottle, like the same bottle you get a bloody so, your um, soft drink in. Uh, and it says on here, uh, makes 3.3 .3 litres. So, that means every 30ml of that will go into a 330ml bottle. So it's one to, a 1 to 10 ratio, which makes life nice and easy, which means I can just stick, so I can stick 30ml of that into a standard stubby, uh, fill it, put the cap on, mix it through, and it's going to be, and it should be good to go. So, and it's going to be the same with the solo, and I can't, I can't know where it is, got me measuring, got me uh, highly accurate measuring device, one medicine cup, which is 30 mils pretty much to the brim, uh, it's a fraction under the top, so that's going to be going to say, and the soda stream actually works out to be, it's more like 20 mils, this is a 440 ml bottle, and this makes it up to 9 litres, uh, which works out to be about 19.5, somewhere in that, probably 19.4, 19.5 mils per that 330 ml bottle. Um, before I get into actually doing some bottles, I'm going to get a final gravity reading. Because the last reading I did, this was at 1000, uh, and I expected it to get a bit lower than that. Now, she's quite gassy at the moment because it's still under a fair whack of pressure. Um, Get rid of some of that. that might help with the uh, with the fizziness. I've got the gas bottle connected just to give us enough pressure to actually force it out of the all rounder. Okay, that's better. We're still going to get some. That's nowhere near as, as much. So. While I'm filling that, what I want to do is just have a bit of a, a bit of a taster on the on the flavour, just to make sure that level is going to work all right, and also get a bit of a taster on this itself. Now, I said I've got enough. I've, I've got like it's like eleven and a half litres in the in the all rounder. Um, I've got enough flavouring to certainly flavour that, but I haven't got enough bottles. Um, I bloody, I stuffed up. Um, had a box sitting here, um, which I'm, I'm thinking, ah, oh, yeah, 24, 24 bottles, 8 bottles for each one. That's going to work out reasonably well. Um, and then I thought you just rinse, put them through a final wash before just to sanitise the bottles. And <laughs> still not me occurred to me that the box is actually... Um, it's one of the craft cartel boxes they deliver the craft, the monthly packs in, and there are six, there's 16 bottles, there's not 24. Um, so I'm a bit short, so well, <laughs> I'm just going to throw up one 1.25 litre bottle of each batch, uh, which will be fine. Uh, so I'm probably going to not actually bottle all of this, but uh, that's it. Yeah. But this video is not about. Hello. Hello. This is Little Jay rattling the cage. You coming in? Yeah, where are you? I've like reached up. Yeah. Actually, that's all right. You can taste this while you're here. What is it? Seltzer. Is it good for me or bad? Yeah, it's just fucking. It's just water. It's alcoholic water. It's got no cal practically no calories. Go on then. Right, uh, soon as Mrs. Little John's bloody so rudely interrupted, we'll get it. She can um, do a quick tasting. Okay. So I'll make up a glass at full strength. This is going to be the same level as doing a stubby. Uh, it's coming up nice and clear. So this is alcoholic? This is alcoholic. But um, no calories. Very few calories. 
There'll be some calories from the alcohol, but not a lot. Um, there's no, this is sugar free. I'll explain to the people, sugar free. Can I just drink it on its own? Yeah. I'll like to try that. We'll try that. Mrs. I've discussed with the, on the videos before, Mrs. Little J drinks mm. mineral water. It smells strong. It's all right. It's all right. It. He says it's all right. There's a bit of a smile going on there. So let's put some flavouring in. Oh, the second one was a bit wicked. So that's lemonade. Clean the spoon. Did that spoon look clean? Keep the wife happy. Yeah. Now, I don't know what the actual alcohol content is because I've still got to take that sample. So I've just returned from a walk. I'm going to have a few. It's all right. Get this and Drink the whole thing if you want. It goes through my system quite quickly, I imagine. Off the numbers the other day, our alcohol is about 3 point, about three percent. So it might be a little bit higher. Take the edge off, but I think I prefer it without. Okay, so you're preferring it with water. That's the lemonade. She might like the lemon or the orange mango. See? Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. No worries. Bye. This is Little John. Rare, rare cameo performance. Rare footage. <laughs> oh, that's not bad at all, is it? It's quite nice. That's not bad. We've got the nod of approval for Mrs. Little John anyway. I'll give it the nod of approval too. That is quite tasty. It's nice and sweet, despite there's no sugar, and yeah, no weird flavours. So, anyway, we'll continue on. So all I'm doing, actually, you know, that's fine. Basically just going to pour, and that, that level is quite good. Like I said, it is fairly sweet, so could possibly even dial back that level a little bit, but now we'll go with that. Uh, another purge. So, yeah, that's it. Then we just fill her up. Oh, look, honestly, that's really not much different than drinking store bought lemonade. You give that to a schoolgirl and she wouldn't know. Not that I recommend giving it to schoolgirls. But yeah, that, that works really, really well. So, very happy with that. We're going to get a cap on this fella. And I'll get a uh, final gravity reading. No, uh, yeah. I so just want to give that a bit of a mix through. And that's, and that's what I call success. So, we'll get a final reading on that just so I can work out. Uh, it's going to be hard because it wants to lift the gas. Yeah, no, that's been difficult. Oh. Okay, I'm going to let that sit while I finish off the rest of these. Um, and <laughs> I'll, I'll do gas if I need to, but I'll put I'll put a comment I'll put a comment down in the um, in the description about where the gravity finished up and what alcohol we ended up at. As I said from the other day, from the last sample I took, which as it was one triple O. Uh, and the original was 1026. So that's 26, that's 26 points. That's uh, 2.6, That's oh, about 3.3, 3.4% ABV, um, as is. And I said I would initially expect it to drop down around 0.994, but that just does not look like it wants to go under that one triple O. So, it's in that mid-strength sort of a range. Uh, 
but yeah. I'm pretty happy with that, so let's just go through. I'll do the rest of these mixes up, see how they, see how they come up. Um, again, I'll put a little bit of comment in the, in the, in the description um, on how they sort of taste and what I thought of them. And of course, still got the fruit version sitting here, which is not going to get bottled up for another, yeah, probably next weekend now. So, right, uh, just about to bottle up the uh, last of the seltzer. Uh, and this is the batch that got put in the keg on the coconut chunks and the pink dragon fruit. Um, so it's, it's been in the keg. Oh, I don't know, about nine days or something at the moment. Um, soaking up that, uh, hopefully soaking up that flavour. Uh, and going through a secondary fermentation with the extra sugar from the fruit and the coconut. Um, it's got itself up to a nice, about 15, 16 PSI in the bottle. So it should be reasonably, should be well carbon, should bottle up without too much problem. Um, as far as sugar and leading priming so um we'll have a bit of a look at this and just see what she what she turned out like and what she tastes like uh then you guys get a bit of a catch up she's good and fizzy that fizzy's gonna that should settle after a few pours without too much trouble. Oh, we're far out. Check the colour. Look at that. He bloody... He pink. Well, oh, okay, I'm just going to let that settle just a little bit while I get a quick bottle pour here. I've got no extra gas going into this bloody keg at the moment. This is just pouring off its own pressure at the moment. And that's pretty much taking what was there. So, put it in the last one. Some level of clearance anyway, so <laughs> we'll keep going with anyway. Let's have a bit of a taste here. Not a real lot of flavour there. It's not not terrible. It's just not real enticing. Not shocking. Some of them might like it. Anyway, I only have three bottles of these up. <laughs> so. throw all this stuff together uh, and do a um, full video for the channel sometime in the future you know, not too far away uh, anyway guys it's always cheers and thank you for your support see you soon